Well, we've come over here to John's four inch dredge and they call it a four inch because of the size of the nozzle here. That's four inches across here and that's the reason why it's a four inch. When you get a five inch or a six inch, it's the distance of the nozzle. And they're pretty simple pieces of equipment. You got this pump and motor and what this does is this runs a impeller in here that sucks up water out here and that water sucks up and runs through this impeller and creates a high pressured water shooting out of here into this hose and that high pressure water coming out of this hose coming into this jet right here creates a suction out there on the end of the nozzle and that could give you the ability to suck up material as that material sucked up it goes through the hose up through this uh, jet and then is deposited here inside of our sluice box and this sluice box is similar to the other sluice boxes that we've seen earlier. Uh, it's got the Hungarian riffles in there where you've got the eddy in behind there. It's got the classification for separating out the larger size rocks and it makes it pretty simple for you know being down there ain't got no shovel work. No shovel work, you're floating. Just all, all, all hardest part of dredging is moving those rocks. Yeah, this is a, an environmentally sound way of getting gold. Coming in and dredging aerates that material. It's good for the fish habitat. Uh, the, the trout really like it because it puts food out there for them that they normally don't get. And it's, you know, you're not adding anything to the river. You're not taking anything out, but just a little bit of yellow dirt. Uh, so this is a, a real environmentally sound way of getting gold. And you're being real specific too. You're not moving a tremendous amount of material to get a whole lot of gold. It's important not to dilly-dally around when you're on the front end of the nozzle. It's always tempting to poke around and look for those pieces of gold. By all means, if you see a big nugget, pick it up. But you shouldn't be looking around for gold while you're down there. You should be concentrating on moving material through the hose. North Carolina tends to have a lot of clay material. And usually there isn't any gold in the clay. It lays mostly on top of the clay. It's also important to follow and clean out the cracks and crevices in the hard bedrock. Do a damn good job of cleaning them out if you know what I mean. Especially the ones that run deep into little pockets where the gold likes to load up in. Well, we've been dredging for at least two hours now here at Thermal City Gold Mine, and as you can see, Tom's still back there dredging. We just can't seem to get him out of water, so he's having fun. Every once in a while, he'll stick his head up and give us a thumbs up. There's a couple of little fish in there. There's one that's real, real friendly. Yeah. He keeps coming up next to my mask here and, and sticking his fish eye at me like, hello, hello, hello. It's kind of spooking me out. Well, if, if you see a snake come down through, you send him to Gina. Snake? Snake! What kind of snake? Copperhead. You didn't say nothing about no copperheads when I started into the water. Well, we figured we'll let you get under first. Ooh, that's some judging. Ooh, that's a lot of fun. We have some pretty nice color coming out of there. <laughs> yeah, there's quartz stringers running through there. There's soft bedrock. There's hard bedrock. There's granite bedrock. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There you go. Oh boy, that's beautiful down there. Ah. Oh. Man, that's a lot of fun. You get down there and you see all the little fishies and all the different formations in the bedrock and the cracks and the crevices. Well, we'll drop it out and uh, clean up. Cleaning up uh, a dredge, same thing. You just dump your sluice out and uh, see what we got. Well, I'm glad I didn't run into any water moccasins or copperheads down in there. I was watching. So Tom, you want to do a little yeah, in there? Yeah, let's take a quick right. uh, 
Call Quick peek sneak, on the end. sneak peek. A little high grading. And this is the front part of the box, so this is where you want your majority of your gold is right up here in the front. Well, we'll slide that dredge out of the way for now. Let you pan that out and see what we got. I see color. I see yellow. Nice black sand in there. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> yeah! Can tell the old this hasn't been dressed. <laughs> yeah! Beautiful yellow gold all through there. And this is lead shot in here. We're cleaning up all the heavies out of there, and the gold's heavy, uh, the lead's heavy, so we'll do Mother Nature a little favor there and clean up this, this lead up out of there. So the, that's one thing that dredging does is it it cleans up the rivers of the, the lead and the mercury. We're taking it back out of there. And we're also getting this yellow gold. That's yeah, nice. I like that. That's nice. The yellow stuff. Well, we'll take this and dump the clean. rest of it out, and uh, we'll... Uh, Clean it up. We got a whole bunch more to pan too. Yeah, and then we're gonna go down here to Thermal City and uh, chat with the folks down there and uh, show you a little bit around Thermal City. There's definitely good gold here at the Thermal City mine. The property's been in the same family for over four generations, stretching all the way back to 1830s. Thermal City has been open to the public since 1992. Hey, it's good to be out of the water. Owner of Thermal City, how you doing? All right, all right. Maybe a little bit of cloudy day, but uh, a little rainy, oh, but it, we're doing fine. It's not bad, but this is this is really neat here. Uh, you can come here, you guys are open to the public. Been around a long time. Can you tell us some of the history of the area here and the gold? Well, they started mining gold here in the 30s and 40s. and then 18, 18, 30s, 30s and 40s. Before the California they gold were, rush, before out west was out west. That's right. They were painting gold right here on this property 19 years before the California gold rush. I don't mean somewhere in the area, I mean here. Yeah, if people come and do what we tell them to do and generally they find gold. I sure appreciate what you do here, introducing people to prospecting and uh, showing them what it's all about you know, being part of history and finding gold now and learning the techniques and the tips of the trade. And uh, this is a, a really nice camp that you got here. And great that you're introducing people and, and being a spokesperson for prospecting. Well, I appreciate it. And we also have a wonderful clientele too. Yeah, the majority of the people that come here are LDMA GPA people. All right, well, thanks for Letting us come here and get some gold, and it's been fun. thanks for the dredging, and uh, yeah, we'll be back. <laughs> all right. North Carolina's history of gold stretches all the way back to the late 1700s. The Lost Dutchman's Mining Association camp there at Vane Mountain was one of those old mining camps back in the day. And the members at the camp nowadays are part of a new history of finding gold in North Carolina.